Hi, I'm Paul Kasabian. I'm a structural engineer and we've made it. We're here to discuss frames. If you remember, we had six primary colours of structures. We had the cable, the arch, the column. We put columns and cables together to make trusses. We filled in the trusses to make beams. And now we're going to take those beams, bend them, take them down and form a frame. So why do we have frames? Well, we need horizontal floors to walk on, we need vertical walls around us, and we need to walk through spaces. Now a frame, from a structural point of view, is not that efficient. It deals a lot with the forces in bending. And bending is a way that's easy to break things in structures. If you remember I showed a pen and we could break a pen easily by bending it. But even though they are not structurally efficient, they are efficient for what we need structures to do for us, right? We live and work and play in and around structures. So a frame is what we need a lot in our daily lives. And so here we are, we're gonna actually bring together some of the things we've covered before in cables and arches and trusses and talk about them as they relate to the behavior of frames. So. Let's start with a reminder about arches and the idea of a thrust line. Remember, this is an image I showed before, a single weight in the middle. The thrust line where the forces want to go is directly from that weight down to the supports either side. And if your structure is an arch, and let's say masonry blocks that cannot carry bending, then if the thrust line leaves the structure, then the arch wants to bust out. It wants to buckle outwards. Um, now, in the case of a frame, and here we show the frame in gray, we're building it out of a material, steel, reinforced concrete, whatever, that can carry bending moment within it. And we represent that bending moment with a diagram, and this is here, I'm showing it in green, around the uh, frame itself. And what I have here as a frame is a a sort of three hinged portal frame. There's a hinge here in the middle and, and support points on the bottom either side. And this is a kind of a frame that is often made because you can make the two parts on the ground, pick them up and make a single simple connection point in the middle. So these do exist um, around quite a lot. And uh, what you can see here for this situation with the load in the same place as the arch, I appreciate that what I'm showing now on the screen isn't a common occurrence. We normally have distributed load. But just for the sake of discussion here, the thrust line is the same. It goes directly to the supports either side at the base. And so what we have is an increasing bending moment as the structure moves further away from the thrust line, right? It is moving away linearly in a distance, so the bending moment increases linearly. And this is just how we show bending moments on our structures, right? The bending moment is in the structure, but we sort of show it as a diagram. And then it also comes down linearly down to the side. And I've just shown it sort of curving around as an arc of a circle here at the corner, just again, visually. I'm representing the bending moment that's happening here at the corner. And as you might uh, appreciate, that's a single value of bending moment. And it's the maximum bending moment in the structure because it is the furthest distance away from the thrust line. Now, if we make this top part of the frame continuous, this happens. Let's ignore the fact for a second that the thrust line has zoomed off the page um, and look at the bending moment diagram. As you can see here, that has shifted quite a lot. It's all got less. That makes a lot of sense because there's more continuity through this frame. Um, what we also have is that the uh, bending moment has gone down to cause tension here in the bottom and then tension up here on the top. And where have we seen this before? If we just look at the beam, we saw this before when we were looking at beams with fixed ends, right, represented by the hands clamping on the top and bottom to restrain movement at the ends of the beam, and that produced this bending moment diagram I covered in an earlier video. So if I go back to the frame, what do we have here? Well, we have that same kind of continuous beam, but instead the fixity at the end is no longer created by clamped hands or a fixed end connection. What we have is it's, it's created by the bending stiffness of these columns either side that are 
moment connected or continuous through to the beam. So the bending moment diagram represented here for the same weight will be slightly lower than the bending moment diagram shown for a fully fixed end, simply because end columns to a frame are not perfectly rigid. Right? Remember, bending moment diagrams exist and their position, the bending moment diagram shape exists, and their position depends on the fixity of the end supports of a beam or, or column that might exist. And what we do have, going back to the thrust line here, is a representation of the thrust line coming through the location of zero bending moment. Essentially, right, every time you have a structure and a thrust line intersect, you have zero bending moment in your structure. And if you're wondering, well, that's odd that the, bending, uh, the thrust line is going all the way off the page. Remember, this is really centered on the line of force of the weight, something I've represented in the cable video, where it doesn't matter where that weight is, it's still causing a vertical effect at that location on the frame. So this is how frames link to continuous uh, fixed end beams, rather, that can become con continuously bent around the corner to form a frame, such as this. And now let's think about uh, moving on one more step to pushing the frame up further up. So we've gone from a horizontal uh, beam at the top of our frame to kicking it up higher, still maintaining the weight at the top, but I've added the pin back. Okay, so these exist around quite a lot as well. They are the same idea as the first frame I showed you, but they give you bigger space on the interior. Um, and what we have here, as you can see, is the same idea. Even though the frame looks very different, it is no longer a kind of classic rectangular frame, there's still that same idea of the thrust line coming from the pin to the base, the same idea of the bending moment increasing linearly until it's to the point furthest away from the thrust line, and then decreasing back to zero, again, because this is the way I'm representing this is a pinned base, so there's zero bending moment. You see, so we can, we can, without having to do calculation, appreciate thrust line from loads and appreciate where structure is compared to the thrust line to know that the location with the biggest bending moment, i.e. the location where we're going to have to deal with the biggest effect of the load, is at this location, right? We'll obviously need to quantify that, that's analysis. But in terms of thinking about design of structures and behavior, this is the level of thinking that we can achieve to understand that location of maximum bending moment. And equally, again, we can fix here the bases. This often happens, you usually leave the top pinned for ease on a structure this tall. But if you fix the bases, notice the difference here. It's still the same idea of linear bending moment, but it flips around to the uh, other side because we've got of the, of the base of the columns because we've got fixity there, and then that kicks the thrust line out. Again, um, thrust line is a location of force, force times distance, bending moment. Now, let's go back to the very first image I showed you when I dealt with trusses. Remember this one, we have a single weight, we've got a compression member and a tension member holding all of this in equilibrium. Okay, and we built, we used this to build up um, the idea of trusses. But for now, I want us to rotate this 90 degrees like so. I know this seems weird, right? Just follow me on it. And I know, I know gravity, wherever you may be, goes straight down. But if we imagine a force to the side, this structure would be stable. It's the same idea as I was showing at this, at this earlier truss concept to here. Why am I showing you a horizontal force? Because frames don't just deal with gravity loads, our own weight and the weight of things and objects but they also deal with lateral horizontal loads, such as wind or seismic forces. So it's good to know the thrust line for horizontal forces, because the thrust line is the same concept, but will be in compression and tension. So here, we can now appreciate if we take a frame, continuous frame, and apply a horizontal load to it that might come from winds or earthquake, and I'm showing it here representing back at the good old weight, except I've put it around a pulley so it can pull over to the side. Now with this, we have got a thrust line that looks just like the first one I showed you with sort of this inverted V, but one is in compression, pushing down, and the other is in tension, pulling up. This is why sideways forces often need a hold down at the end of the, the frame. This is what we call a moment frame. It is a frame structure, obviously, 
but we call it a moment frame when we deal with it as a as a lateral system uh, entity, a piece of to carry the lateral forces um, on a building, on a structure. And in this moment frame, we have mo bending moment shown again in green, which is doing exactly the same thing as before, increasing linearly as we go away from the thrust line. But notice how it is it is it is changing linearly, but on the opposite side than before when it was just a vertical load in the middle. And again, this makes sense. You may have learnt bending moment diagrams that are shaped like this for sideways loads. And I'm representing to you why this happens because of the distance from the thrust line, whether the thrust line is in compression, and therefore it's tension on the opposite side of that, or whether it's a tension thrust line and it comes down this way. This is a diagram that isn't often shown Usually you just see the bending moment diagram for lateral loads, but I want to just get across to you the power of thrust line thinking. Equally, we can fix the bases of this uh, uh, moment frame. We do that often to sort of limit deflections, um, and that helps when we're trying to uh, size some of these uh, columns and, and the horizontal members of the frame. Um, and we can also, if we then pin the bases, stack moment frames on top of one another, right? This upper one is the same as the first one I showed you. It has its own lateral force. All of that lateral force kicks down into here, adds to the next level. This would be wind on each level or the effect of an earthquake on each level, and therefore result in sort of continually increasing bending moments as you go down. This is a bigger triangle down on this level than on the one above. And this is how you would stack moment frames as you go up in a structure. And this is the increasing effects of the bending moments on lateral forces as you come down the structure to its base. So let's look at a, uh, an example here um, where visually a lot of what we've discussed is now represented. This is the uh, Gabriel des Machines, uh, which was used for the uh, Paris Expo back in 1889. And what we can see uh, represented of, um, here, and I like showing structures like this, not because I'm necessarily uh, preferentially treating them in any way, so much as it helps us understand what is sometimes hidden in structural behavior. And what we have here, large open space, raised level. What you can see if you look closely, there's a pin right up there where my cursor's are hovering. And it may be hard to see, but that's really a pin structure. Again, they created all of these sides on the ground, picked up, and that meant it was easy to connect up at a high location. There's also a pin down here, which we know is the case because of its narrowing. And then key point, even though there would be distributed load here, not just a big point load as I was showing you earlier, but either way, even with the distributed load, we can appreciate that the bending moment is going to increase in this corner zone of the frame structure. And therefore, here we are seeing a deepening of that structure. I appreciate that we can see this member coming around and that's helping but understand that the whole structural section is from this interior point of the arc through to this corner, essentially. You could picture it as visually something curved, like essentially an arch, um, but the corner is framed. And at the end of the day, that's really what we're dealing with here. I showed you that arch at the very beginning, buckling out. Picture it as either you now have something that can carry bending moments so it doesn't buckle, or essentially it has been frozen in position, right? And it's why we deal a lot with materials that can carry bending. They help us when we want to create structures that help us live our lives. This is the interior, sort of with showing you that the concept of that frame was repeated all the way along. So sort of showing a very grand interior, it is a very impressive space. And then finishing up here, I do love this shot because I explained that you know we have a pinned base as this is coming down and this really represents all the forces coming down to the ground, um, tapering to a point. You can even see the sort of curved part of the pin, essentially, as it's coming down. You don't need a curved section to form a pin, but it certainly is there for you. The tapered section does most of that work because there's not much to grab onto. But then also something like this means that it, it related not just to structural behavior, but to their method of being able to erect the structure, right? That's where a lot of the effort comes into place. You can pin at the base and tip it over and have its matching pair on the other side, matching half, come together to make the simple connection at the top. So this is 
overall a wonderful structure to represent the behavior we've discussed on frames, while also incorporating realistic, um, beneficial approaches to how this large structure is going to be built.